Joining us now is Peter Tuckman, an icon here on Wall Street, NYSE Einstein. So why are you called Einstein? Do I need to answer any? It's very simple, because I look like Einstein, but I'm not that smart. So you're here for over 35 years? 32 years. I started here in 1985. I was a kid and I started as a teletypist. I had a summer job and it was just, you know, the funny thing about this place is either the, the job description works for you and you can deal with the excitement and the frenetic and the stress or not. And for me, it was just a place that worked perfectly with my personality. And in these three decades, you always reinvented yourself. I did reinvent myself. Look, it's a, it's a business that changes a lot. You know, the, to, be a, what, to be a bro, my goal was to become a broker and I did that really quickly. It used to take many, many years to become a broker, but the business itself has changed. I've been very resistant over a lot of things because I'm not a particularly a tech savvy guy. I was the last person to go from the pad, which is what we used for a hundred years, to a handheld computer. I don't own a computer myself. Uh, so I resisted that a lot, but it, eventually it caught up with me and I had to really, you know, follow suit. But I've been reinvented myself in the different trading models I do, different customers I've had. So back in the day, everything was like open outcry, right? Correct. So, and I think there are different types of people. Ones are maybe a little bit louder and more uh, dominant, and others are maybe more quiet, but maybe they can use the handholds better than others. So what's important today? Is it more to use your brain and to know how to use the computer? You know what, it's fine. Let's look at it as a poker game. Okay, if you're a blackjack player or a poker player, and you go to Las Vegas, you sit at a table. I am not a poker player. Okay, but I'm obviously a gambler because I trade the market. But, you know, it's, there's psychology involved. So if you are, and I'm sure most people have sat down at a poker table before, you know, there are ways, there are people who are card counters who are sort of very high tech and they, they figure out what, what the probability of the next card to be. And then there are people who read people, right? And that's how they play their hand. So in here, even though there we have a computer and you can be very savvy on the computer and different algorithms and whatnot, at the end of the day, if you read the market, so I can, I can, the computer in my opinion can only do so much, but at the end of the day it's about information. So if I read through this, everybody looks at information differently. I try and ask the market maker who's been here, what's going on. As I said to you, I look at the screen and see what oil's doing, volatility's doing, what the markets are doing. I like to look at headlines and see what's happening, and I look at the sector. So everybody has a different way to do their, you know, judge on how to trade, how aggressive to be. It's a fascinating thing. You, I can, and I can change it on a daily basis or by minute, by minute to minute. Joining us too is Jens Rabe. He's a trader from Germany and he's trading options. So Jens, do you have a question for our Einstein? Uh, I'm, I'm so full of questions for him, so I, I think we can talk the next uh, 10 hours. Okay, but uh, um, when you, is there a, uh, when, when a young man comes and says, I want to be a trader right now in the stock market, what would you tell him? What should he do uh, and uh, which mistake he should not do. So, unfortunately, this place was an incredible uh, reservoir of work opportunities over the last hundred years. It, you know, I came here in the 80s. I, when I got here, it was there were a lot of uh, family businesses, people who came down here. There were a lot of rags to riches stories. People who came down here as a job, they were, you know, whether shining shoes or, or running back and forth for someone, and they were good at the job, and they, they rose up the, the ranks. Right? They started at the bottom and they became successful brokers. But um, the nature of the business has changed. As I've shown you with a handheld computer, my machine now can do what it used to take 50 people to do. And I think that's in, the, in, in all the whole business of trading, that where you have computers and you have, not necessarily high frequency, but you've got um, an electronic trading marketplace that the job descriptions have changed. And it's not as easy. Back in the day, I mean, my son works with me here. He just graduated college. After, and he loved finance. He always wanted to come work down here. Back in the day, it would be a natural progression that my son would come down here. He would start helping me in the booth, and then he would become a broker, and <coughs> excuse me, and that would be his calling. But I'm the only one with a father and son situation here on the floor. We used to have 10,000, 7,000 employees down here. Now there's maybe 1,000. You know, my computer can, my handheld computer can send out a thousand orders in five seconds. So when young people, and they often do, will ask me, what do I do? I love finance, I love trading, I'd love to be a trader. 
you know, the, the, which road do I take? Do I go get an MBA and I learn accounting and stuff like that? I'm not clear whether that's the best path. Is there job opportunities here on the floor as a trader? Probably not. Um, but what I always say is find some part, you know, you need to really dig and find some part of this business that you really love. There are plenty of opportunities upstairs, whether it's in foreign exchange, if that intrigues you, whether in becoming an analyst, whether becoming a portfolio manager, you know, there are brokerage firms that are big, that have big opportunities. There are Morgan Stanley's, the JP Morgan's, uh, the UBS's, um, Deutsche Bank's, right? Um, you know, my goal for my son would be is to get, and, and hedge funds, right? Yeah. So I always say find something you really love to do and really have to dig and dig until you, until you find that. You know, read a lot about the markets, watch a lot of market TV, listen to the guys who are really smart, you know, and knock on every door you have to. Uh, it's not as easy as it used to be to break into this business, right? Personality's key, information's key, the ability to deal with another human being, you know? And then you've got to be, I fight it, but you've got to be really tech savvy. You really need to understand algorithms and, and uh, uh, but the market is amazing. You know, there, there's, there's got to be opportunities. It's just, it's not as easy as it used to be. So the third, first thing I always say to people is you got to find something that w makes you want to wake up in the morning. Okay, there are a lot of people I believe who are doing jobs they don't particularly like. And for me, that's, that's the most important thing. I've been doing this for 32 years. I come here whether I'm sick, whether somebody died, whether anything, because I love coming here. It's actually, it's, it's peaceful for me. As chaotic as this place is, it's what gets my juices going. So I always say that to young people, find something you love to do. And it may not be the first thing, you may have to keep trying, right? You give it to Secondly, me, as far as, as you know, broker, integrity is isn't really important. The stock market is, um, the Wolf of Wall Street is a bad example for people to follow. As you know, our, 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 our creed here is that your word is your bond, right? Integrity, I kind of think, in anything you do is really the most important thing. Because once you throw something really negative, or illegal into the air, you can never really pull it back. So down here, you know, I, I trade a billion, you know, a billion dollars of stock a year. I never transact cash, right? The reason that people trade with me is because they know that I will stand behind my trade. So my gut is that, you know, that, that your integrity and your character are the most important thing in whatever you do, whether you're in finance or not, okay? On honesty, right? And then finding something you love to do. You know, and that may take some digging, it may take some, some navigating, but at the end of the day, you've got to find something that makes you want to wake up in the morning. And I, I think you already uh, said it, for you, this is like a family here, right? You know what, 100%. It is not what it used to be, and, but nothing ever is, you know, things change, life changes and whatnot. You know, when I came here, there were thousands of people here, there were grandfathers and sons and grandsons who worked together in companies. You know, it was a very warm community of Irish and Italian and Jewish people, not many women at the time. There's still not that many women in finance. But it was a place that, that you know, you're, you're in a very closed environment. You're under a lot of stress. And, you know, when that happens, people's true character comes out. And for me, my experience with Wall Street, with the stock exchange, not all Wall Street, because upstairs is different. This has been the most philanthropic, the most, the closest family, you know, um, that I've ever experienced, right? When my, my, recently my brother died and I came, I, the next day I came to work, you know, because I know that these are people who support me, who have known me for many years and where else would you want to be when things are, you know, are bad. So I think that's also, you know, the work environment is really important. We're seeing that now in, in the culture, in the work culture, like at Facebook and Google and Amazon, my understanding, maybe not Amazon, But that, you know, that environment that you're seeing in Silicon Valley, where people, people's health is important in the workplace, the, the camaraderie is important in the workplace. You know, I'm not somebody who wakes up in the morning and sits in a cubicle and drinks coffee and reads the paper, right? I like to come out of the gate. You know, it's like the Kentucky Derby. I like that energy and that action, right? And my son is the same way. He loves that. You know, this is, this is my office, right? It's the greatest office in the world. So what do you think? We can see you here in uh, 20 years and you are still on the floor? 100%. I will come in here no matter what. Look, I love coming in to trade. 
uh, for my customers. I love to come in to be on the sort of cutting edge of, of, of what's going on in the world, right? I do a lot of other things, you know, I'm doing a lot of TV. I do your show, I do CNN. I love doing that and I'm not your normal commentator, right? It's my, it's my version of the market, so it's a little different. But uh, I'm involved now with mentoring young students in, the, in learning on finance. I'm involved in art and young people in doing that through social media and stuff like that. So you know what, my day is full. No matter what, I'll still come here. Was will man mehr so gefühlt, wenn man äh, im Herzen Trader und Aktionär und Investor ist, heute die New York Stock Exchange von innen zu sehen, war ein tolles Erlebnis. Absolut, also es ist wie ein Kindheitstraum, der jetzt hier in Erfüllung gegangen ist und äh, es ist wirklich äh, toll, also man hat zu so viele Emotionen, die auf einen einprasseln. Ich glaube, ich brauche jetzt ein paar Tage, bis ich das setzen kann. Wir haben ja nun gesehen, wie die Berkshire Hathaway Aktie auch hier gehandelt wird. Wir haben Glenn kennengelernt, den Market Maker, der nur für diese Aktie auch zuständig ist. Was war das für ein Erlebnis? Das ist natürlich toll, weil wenn man selbst Aktien dieser Gesellschaft hat und man mit ihm dann auch gesprochen hat, dann weiß man ja, dass wahrscheinlich die eigenen Aktien, die man hat, durch seine Hände zumindest elektronisch gelaufen sind. Also ich habe die ja immer mal wieder ein paar gekauft und äh, da ist das schon, es, es macht es irgendwie greifbar. Er war derjenige, der meinen Kaufauftrag vielleicht durchgeleitet hat. Und das ist natürlich toll zu wissen. Ähm, es ist, ein, schönes, äh, ist ein, schönes, äh, ein schöner Moment einfach. Und es war auch interessant zu hören, dass diese Aktie auch äh, wirklich händisch noch gehandelt wird und nicht wie die meisten Algorithmen irgendwie die Kauf- und Zellaufträge verteilen. Also ich fand zwei Dinge sehr, sehr interessant. Zum einen das, was jetzt schon erwähnt wurde, dass das eben händisch gemacht wird. Alle anderen laufen nur noch über die Computer. Äh, hier wird wirklich noch richtig Angebot und Nachfrage zusammengeführt, so wie man das vielleicht vor 20, 30 oder 100 Jahren auch schon gemacht hat. Ähm, das liegt natürlich daran, dass die Aktie einfach so unheimlich teuer ist, also dass sie eben fast 300.000 Dollar kostet. Und zum anderen, und das fand ich genauso spannend, dass er als, als Market Maker in dieser Aktie natürlich sich sofort hedged, indem er dann wieder kleine Aktien dagegen handelt, also die B-Aktien dagegen handelt. Für uns als Investoren ist es ja eher so, wir kaufen die Aktie, lassen sie bestenfalls sehr, sehr lange liegen und verdienen dann Geld. Aber er muss ja sein Risiko permanent unter Kontrolle haben und er hat quasi dann immer alle beide Aktien im Blick und macht das. Und das war wirklich spannend, mal zu sehen, wie es so ein Profi einfach macht. Peter hat auch klar gemacht, dass die jungen Leute auch lernen müssen, wie man mit Finanzmärkten, wie man mit Finanzen und Geld umgehen muss. Ganz klar, er hat uns einen ganz, ganz tollen Tipp gegeben, den man auch in der Praxis sehr leicht umsetzen kann. Er hat gesagt, wenn die ganzen, er hat gesagt die Kids, aber er meint natürlich auch die, die Mitte 20-Jährigen vielleicht, wenn die halt sagen, okay, ich brauche einen, die, diese neuen Sneaker kommen heraus und die finde ich ganz toll, dass man sagt, okay, dann kauft ihr ein paar Sneaker weniger, aber kauft ihr eine Aktie der Firma oder warte halt, bis du dir das neue iPhone kaufst, kauft dir stattdessen lieber eine Aktie von Apple. Und so der Tipp an uns geht einfach raus, schaut, was die jungen Leute haben, was sie für Kleidung tragen, welche Technik sie nutzen, er hat Facebook angesprochen. Und wenn man, glaube ich, einfach auf diese Trends hört, dann ist Aktienanlage auch nicht kompliziert. Man muss einfach schauen, was konsumieren die Leute, wofür geben sie Geld aus. Und dann ist es der einfachste Weg, sich an diesen Unternehmen halt zu beteiligen und dann wird man auch sehr, sehr gut damit fahren. You really made a great business for so many decades. What was the secret in the beginning? The secret in the beginning was hard work. Take care of your customers. And this is, this is continuous, you know, you cannot do it for one day or two days. You have, this business is a hard work all the time. And you always have to satisfy your customers because Without the customers, nothing works. So, and I was very good on that. People liked me, they helped me to do well. And uh, I really, I enjoy my life for what I did and what I'm still doing. How important was the Wall Street community here? It was a big part, and all my business was Wall Street. Today is a little different. Today we have a lot of residents down here. And uh, it changed the picture a little. You know, before it was all business, 
now we have business and residence, which, in a way, things change. A lot of people left downtown, they went to different places, and computers change everything, people work from home too. But uh, still, we're getting a lot of old timers, a lot of people from the exchange or the Wall Street firms which left down here, they got still good business. We have the uh, Deutsche Bank, we have our Goldman Sachs, we have other companies, JP Morgan. There's still a lot of good business left. And with that, and the residents, our business is getting better and better. So the customers changed, did the business, your business here change too? Did you have to change your business model or something? We, we have to change Lulu. My son just redecorated the place. And, uh, and somebody said to him, why you do that? You have a good business and everything. Well, my son always told me, we get a lot of young people now. We have to change the rules. So his answer was, you do, you do things, you change things when you don't have to do it. Because if you have to do it, it's harder. <laughs> so you dedicated really your life to all your work here. That's awesome. And every time I come here, the food is so good. So do you have any future goals, how you want to develop here? Me? Not anymore, you know, now it's my son's business. And uh, right now I gave him one restaurant and now he's got 25. And I have two grandkids. And I will spend my time with the grandkids and help my son Lulu as much as I can, you know. But I, I still have a good time. I spend my time here and uh, it's, it's beautiful. Letzter Abend mit einem fantastischen Dinner klang jetzt aus. Wie fällt das Resümee aus? Das Resümee fällt äh, absolut positiv aus, sowohl das Dinner jetzt, aber natürlich auch die kompletten letzten äh, acht Tage waren es ja immerhin, waren fantastisch. Ähm, man hat so viel erlebt, man hat so viele Eindrücke. Ich glaube, man braucht jetzt erstmal eine gewisse Zeit, um das alles nochmal zu rekapitulieren und zusammenzufassen. Aber als Fazit, es war wirklich fantastisch. Gab es denn aus Chicago, Omaha und New York irgendein Highlight, was besonders herausstach? Nein, weil es waren im Grunde genommen Highlight, ein Highlight, ein Highlight aneinandergereiht. Es waren so viele verschiedene Dinge. Also einmal natürlich Chicago, so der Besuch in meiner alten äh, Lernheimat, also auf dem Parkett äh, der, der äh, CMI. Dann natürlich die Hauptversammlung mit Warren Buffett und Charlie Munger in Omaha, die wieder ganz anders war. Und dann natürlich jetzt auch nochmal hier die Zeit in New York, der Besuch der New York Stock Exchange, aber auch so etwas wie den Times Square bei Nacht. Das sind wirklich so viele Highlights da. Da wäre es einfach nicht gerecht, einen herauszuheben. Es war das, das Gesamtergebnis oder das Gesamterlebnis, besser gesagt, was es, so, ähm, was es so toll gemacht hat. Was kommt jetzt als nächstes? Erstmal wieder etwas Erdung zu Hause, etwas wieder äh, ganz normales äh, Business, also ganz normal. Äh, Geschäft, Familie, freue ich mich auch wieder sehr darauf, gerade auf die Familie auch natürlich. Und äh, ja, dann schauen wir mal, was, das, äh, was, was noch so kommt.